Good morning, everyone. I take this privilege early morning to greet you in the <coughs> sorry name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I wish you all very good morning. And today I was not so worthy to take this time, but it is God's plan that I should bring the message for today's morning. Today, as we are reading uh, the leave like Eliza, leave like Eliza and chapter 11, the heading of this message is cross your Jordan. And for today's memory verse is given from 2 King chapter 2 and verse 8. It says, Eliza took his mantle and folded it together and struck the water and they were divided here and there so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. As we know that uh, Eliza and Elisha, Elisha, both young men were traveling together and Elisha was following Eliza and he wanted to go wherever Eliza was going. And Eliza was chosen person of God and God wanted him to go to the people and preach and tell the love of God during the king of Ahab. And after that, the king of Ahaziah also, they were both Eliza and Elisha working together. And here, one day, probably, probably an ordinary looking day, Elisha asked to stay behind while he traveled to Bethel. But Elijah said to Elisha, you stay, just I am going to Bethel and I will come back. But Elisha, he did not want to leave him. He said, as the Lord leaves you and as you yourself leave, I will not leave you. He was not ready to leave him alone and he wanted to go with him and he followed him always. When he was going to Jericho, also he said, you stay. I am just going to Jericho and I will come back because God has planned for me to go to Jericho and be with the people of Jericho. And Beth, uh, he said, there also Elisha said, I will not leave you. And both of them, they traveled together to Jericho and <clears throat> <clears throat> while traveling to Jericho, they had to uh, cross the Jordan River. And as they were walking, they reached near the river of Jordan. And the uh, 50 sons of prophets, they were watching them that how these two peoples, they are walking towards Jordan and how they will be crossing. And they uh, thought that maybe they will come and ask the boat from us that they will be crossing the river. But Eliza has faith and he remembered that as Moses was leading the Israelites, and 
Moses stuck his uh, rod which he was having in his hand and he hit the water of uh, the sea and it was parted. He thought that the same God is still there and he strong he was having strong faith on god and he uh, folded his stuff mantle and he just stuck the water and water divided into two part and both of them they crossed and it was very form faith of eliza that he remembered that when during the time of moses god has done this miracle even he had that same faith and he stuck the water and water got divided what a uh, happy moment for eliza and elisha both they crossed the jordan and they went, they crossed, and the <clears throat> 50 young sons of the prophets watched. Why? How this happened? They opened their mouth and they saw Elijah struck the Jordan River with his mantle and he struck the water by faith. And they both crossed. God is still there. Those who are having firm faith and doing their work. Eliza's mantle was just as much as a symbol of God's power and authority as was Moses' staff. There was no magic or power in the mental, but all power and authority in God, the message was undeniable. No, never, no challenge that stands in the way of what God has called us to do is ever bigger than God who called us to cross it and rivers are for crossing in God's way. Rivers comes in every day life, what we are living in our daily life, day to day, we are having to cross the river. And we have to have faith, firm faith like Eliza, and we have to work, and God is there to help us, and God is there to guide us, and God is there to do the miracles even in our life today. There was a story told about a family. They were living uh, in Canada. They had gone to Canada and they came to Lacombe, Alberta with less than $100, they say. They were not having more than $100 and they were supposed to have a rental house and because after a month there was supposed to have heavy rainfall, heavy snowfall. And before that, they have to have their house as soon as it is possible. They were having only $100 and they have to have the rental house. And they both 
husband and wife and one daughter with them they were planning to have good house here they are talking let's go look for a house to rent he said to his wife and after <clears throat> some days they tried and they found a house wife's name was april she looked at him with big question mark in her eyes and said what kind of house are we looking for in the less than 100 dollar range and they said let us pray and god will help us to find the house and then we trust that he will bring us funds to rent it both wife and daughter and the man began to look for a place to live and they knew that there was very few days from the first snowfall so uh, finding a place was there on top of their requirement list that their house was the first priority for anything then finally they found a cute house that both husband wife and uh, three of them they liked it it was very close to the school close to the grocery shop and the bank and the post office everything was very nearby when uh, husband told that if it is raining if the snowfall will be there also i can come easily to have any grocery when we require even though roads will be slippery i can manage to come and go then the owner told them for the monthly rent and that they needed the same amount for security deposit also and they were very stunned and they felt that how to manage it was much smaller place where they were where where they were living before but the price was very i and though it was costly but they have to manage to live in that house and any how they have to rent the same house and the money was less but they were praying and praying and they found the right place and place was very good and they liked it but the price was high according to their uh, reach and they were not knowing that how to manage all the expense what they have to give then they started praying they kept praying praying and praying and praying and they have faith that really god will help us and then early morning 7 o'clock the house owner told that tomorrow you can come in the morning with the money they he said that you have to bring the security deposit as well as the monthly rent and when he said you have to come with the money he said yes yes sir i will come but 
he was not having sufficient amount but from then they were praying and praying and praying but the next morning they were praying and asking god and they were remembering god's promises that was written in philippians 4:19 that my god will surely supply all our needs according to his riches in glory in christ jesus and they prayed <clears throat> and he went early morning for a revival meeting 5 o'clock 558 morning he went for a revival meeting and he said he was opening the bible on a small podium while people gathered to pray he was just getting ready to begin the meeting when a man came up to him and grabbed him by the collar and pulled him out into the hallway and they had only been in canada for few days and his mind rest to think of what horrible thing they could have done to anybody to cause someone to publicly yank him by his collar out a prayer meeting he was completely completely baffled and the man lowered his voice and they said uh that voice said this morning i was walking through our dark house the man was walking through his dark house to come to the prayer meeting when he passed the tv god strongly impressed him to stop shove his hand on the tv and to grab any cash he had that he was working and he was keeping on top of the tv and so in the dark he grabbed all the cash lying there and he found that it was uh, he put it in the envelope and god told him that you needed it and he said as the envelope out from his pocket to his jacket a uh, pocket of his jacket and then gave him and pushed him and he said now go back in there and call us to revival we need it around here then after some time he went home and handed that money to his wife in the envelope and as she opened and started counting she counted the money and she made her eyes big that the money was as much as they needed for the security deposit and she was very happy to have that money and the husband he said my dear now what about the other half of what we have to give for the monthly rent then they said let's pray and let's ask god will provide let us pray together for that another half of amount also 
God will provide for us. And then after few hours, he has to go to the uh, house owner and he has to submit the monthly rent as well as uh, security deposit. And when the house owner said, you have brought the money, he said, yes, sir. And as he was going to the house owner, he said, now I am going to put my feet on the Jordan and he has to cross the Jordan. It was big problem what crossing Jordan is in our everyday life we are facing and we are crossing the Jordan. He said, my heart was thumping as I pulled up to the rental house to meet the owner. I fingered the envelope with half of the, half of what we needed. God, I ventured, you can multiply this cash just like you multiplied the five loaves of bread and two fish for the 5,000 people. And same, he was having faith and belief in God. And he said, as you have done those days, now also you can do for me. And he prayed and he stood near the door and he rang the doorbell. And the person, the house owner came out and he just asked him, do you bring the money for the rent and the deposit? He replied, here is the money I brought. And <clears throat> both of them, they sat on the table near the kitchen and I, he placed the money envelope in front of him on the table and that cash was only for the security deposit and he slowly pushed that envelope towards the house owner and he was having that prayer in his mind, somehow God should multiply this amount for the security deposit as well as the house monthly rent. And he said he was knowing that there was only $100 and that was only for security deposit. And the person, house owner, he took out the money. He counted and he was, when he was counted, he was excitedly waiting for the uh, counting that now my God must have done it double but as the counting is over only the security deposit was sufficient and he saw in the envelope there was nothing more left in envelope and he was very disheartened and he was thinking now what the house owner will say and he was House owner was just quietly without smiling. He looked at him and said, only this much money is there. And he was waiting for his explanation. And he said, just 
excuse and he thought that i have only this much money before he could say anything he asked that this is all you brought he said yes sir it's all i brought he answered and hmm he was waiting for his answer what he will say he started at the lonely stack of insufficient 100 dollars bill and he said i will tell you what you have to do is i am taking this money as a security deposit and you can have the first month's rent free let's sign the rental agreement he was so happy he could not express he was not uh, knowing that how to put his signature on the paper how god's miracle he can experience in his life and now he said i could not have signed faster we crossed our river and god parted the waters this is what the river was parted all because of his faith and prayer and we do not know how god will do his miracle in our life we are all walking every day with the jordan uh, lying before us but it is our faith and belief how much we are having on god and we can experience his miracles in our life whatever needs crossing in our life right now what stands in the way of us to do what god is calling us to do so cross we have to cross our river so this is what this story tells us that we have to have faith and pray and pray and pray god will remove god will part the river which comes before us so our god is mighty god our god is loving god he never leaves his people he is always with us walk through obstacles to your faith by the authority of god's word it is not by might of our own but it is by the power of god's word everything can be done so may god bless us let us have faith in his words in his power and always realize that god is there with us may god bless us all thank you